Today in our 2017 Nissan Quest, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with a 4-pole flat trailer connector. That's going to be part number C56342. So here's what our wiring is going to look like once we have it installed. It is designed to stay on the outside of the vehicle at all times, so we can have it by our hitch whenever we get ready to hook up. It is going to provide us with a 4-pole flat trailer connector, so we have all the required lights to get down the road safely, like our stop lights, turn signals, and our tail lights. The nice thing about the kit is that we're not going to have to cut or splice into our factory wires at all. We're simply going to have a couple T connectors that are going to go behind the tail light that's going to get the signal for us. Our converter box is going to be powered and fuse protected. It's going to take some of that strain off of our factory tail lights and make sure that if anything were to happen on the trailer, it's not going to backfeed and cause any problems on our car. The maximum amperage for our stop and turn signals is going to be 3 amps, and the maximum amperage for our tail lights is going to be 6 amps. Now that we've seen what our wiring looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to want to open up the rear hatch so that we can get access to our tail lights. We're going to have two bolts that are holding our tail light in, so we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket and pull those out. Now once you get a little loose, you're going to want to pull straight back because there is going to be an alignment tab here on the side and if you go too far out, it'll break that off. But then we'll have our wiring harness that's going into our tail light. It'll be a little tab, push down. and we'll separate the connector and set our taillight aside. And we'll do the same thing over on the other side. So with our taillights removed, we can grab our wiring harness and we're gonna start with a connector that has the yellow, brown, and red wires on it. So we'll match up our connectors and plug them in. Make sure you hear that audible click so we know it locks in place. So now we'll find our four pole wire and the connector that has the green wire attached and we're going to feed it down between the body and the bumper here. We just want to send that wire all the way down so it gets underneath the bumper. If you need to, you can reach underneath and grab it and pull all the excess wire below. You want to make sure you leave the box up here and accessible for right now. Now since we still have access to these wires up top, we're going to grab our black wire. We'll go ahead and put a yellow buck connector on one end and crimp it down. Then we can take the length of black wire they provide us in our kit. We'll strip back the end and crimp it in place on the other end of the buck connector. Now we can feed the rest of the black wire along with the box and everything else down through the side of the body here. And again, you can reach underneath and grab it and pull all the excess down to the bottom by the bumper. So this is where our wire and our converter box came out. Our converter box is going to be on the inside of the bumper here kind of high close to the frame rail. We're also going to have a white wire with a ring terminal attached. This is going to be our ground wire, so we're either going to need to find a bolt or a flat spot of sheet metal where we can attach our ground wire to with one of the provided self-tapping screws. I'm going to take the self-tapping screw and I'm going to go right into the bottom of the frame here. I'm going to start the hole first and then pull the screw out so I can put the ring terminal in place. To mount our converter box, I'm going to take the double-sided foam tape that's in our kit. I'm going to stick it directly to the box. Then I'll remove the backing. And I'm going to stick it to the side of the body here where it'll be up out of the way. Now we can take the T-connector with the green wire. And we're going to run it along the back bumper over to the passenger side tail light. I'm just going to 
go up and around all the supports for the bumper so I don't have to worry about the wire hanging down. In order to get our connector up to our tail light, I attached a piece of airline tube. I'm going to feed it from the bottom until I can get it to come out the hole. Now, if you don't have an airline tube, you can use whatever you have available, even if it is just a coat hanger. But you want to feed it up until you get it to come out, and we can get access, and then start pulling the connector up. Once we get our wire up to the top, we're going to pull all the slack out, make sure we have it all up towards the top, and we'll put a zip tie as an anchor point so we don't have to worry about that wire falling back down. We'll plug our connector in, just like the other side. Make sure it locks into place. Then we can put our tail lights back in and plug the other end of the connector into it. Then we can reinstall our tail lights. At this point, we're going to need to run our black wire up to the battery. Now, whenever you run this, you want to make sure you stay away from any heat sources or any moving parts that may cause damage to the wire and make sure you secure it so it won't get caught when we're driving down the road. I'm going to go ahead and run it and then I'll show you how I routed it. So I ran my wire between the hitch and the frame here, going towards the front. I went over the rear axle and subframe and I dropped it down, went along the outside of the fuel tank here. Then I started zip tying it to the support bar until I got towards the front of the fuel tank. Then I cut over, went underneath this cover, came across, zip tying it to these lines here. And then I used that same method of my airline tube dropping down from the engine bay and pulled it up to the battery. So my wire came up in between our fuse box and the air box here. I actually went around the fuse box and anchored it down to this bracket here. That way I don't have to worry about it falling down and causing any problems later on down the road. But we're going to estimate about how much wire we need to reach the positive post in our battery and then we can trim off the excess. We can strip back the end of our black wire. And we're going to crimp on Another one of the yellow buck connectors. On the other end of our buck connector, we'll take our fuse holder. And these come pre-stripped, so we can just pull a little bit of insulation off. Slide it into our butt connector and crimp it down. On the other end of our fuse holder, we're going to take the ring terminal that comes in our kit, we'll slide the wire over and crimp it in place. And the ring terminal is going to go directly to the positive post. So we can lift up the cover. We're gonna have a nut right on top. So we'll grab a 12 millimeter socket and remove the nut. And we'll slide our ring terminal over the post and we can replace the nut. We'll take our 10 amp fuse, put it into the fuse holder. You want to make sure you leave yourself enough four pole wire here so that it can get close to the receiver tube and then we can tie all the excess underneath the bumper. So I went ahead and plugged in my four pole tester and if you need one of these you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com using part number I26. So we'll run through our lights to make sure all the circuits are working properly. We can see that our running light circuit is working, the left turn signal our right turn signal, and the brakes. 
All we have left to do now is hook up to our trailer and hit the road. That'll finish up your look at the Kurt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C56342 on our 2017 Nissan Quest.